Since ancient times, mankind turned their heads skyward and found meaning in observed cosmic events. Interested in the position of heavenly bodies and the movement of the galaxy, one of the first sciences, astronomy, was developed. Mathematics was the fundamental tool that made exploring planetary motion and astronomical interpretation a reality. And some of the greatest breakthroughs in mathematics were made during the study of the stars. The origins of trigonometry can be traced back to the study of astronomy. The two main branches of trigonometry are plane trigonometry and spherical trigonometry. Plane trigonometry studies the relationship between the sides and angles of a triangle where the vertices are located on a flat plane. This is the type of trigonometry you're introduced to at school. Spherical trigonometry deals with curved triangles drawn on the surface of a sphere. This branch of trigonometry, which is used extensively in astronomy and navigation, enables astronomers to project the spherical heavens onto a flat surface for mapping. The positioning of heavenly bodies has always been at the core of astronomy. How do astronomers measure these heavenly distances which lie beyond the reach of measuring instruments? One of the most accurate methods used is called parallax. To understand what parallax is, try this. Place the index finger of your hand in front of your nose. It doesn't matter which hand. First, close your left eye and look at your finger with your right eye. Then close the right eye and look at your finger with your left eye open. What do you notice? Your finger appears to change position compared to the objects in the background. This effect is called parallax. Parallax describes the apparent change in position of an object against a fixed background due to the angle which the object is viewed from. In astronomy, this effect is called trigonometric parallax. The apparent movement of your finger in front of your face has a simple explanation. Your eyes are in different positions on either side of your face, hence they have different lines of sight to your finger. The difference in the angles due to the line of sight is the parallax, and the distance between your eyes is the baseline. The size of the parallax angle is proportional to the length of the baseline. By using parallax, the distance of the baseline, and trigonometry, astronomers can measure the distances to some stars and other objects in our galaxy without leaving the solar system. Stars are astronomically far away from the Earth. As the distance to a star increases, the parallax decreases. Astronomers know that if the parallax angle is too small to measure because the object is too far away, they have to increase the distance between the vantage points of the baseline. Since a star is so far away, its parallax is so small that using a short baseline like the distance from one eye to another will never work. We need a massive baseline to measure from. We have just that in the diameter of the orbit of the Earth. The distance from the Earth to the Sun, the closest star to Earth, is one astronomical unit, or AU, which is roughly 150 million kilometers. Hence, the diameter of the orbit of the Earth is 2 AU, or approximately 300 million kilometers. This is the baseline used to measure the distance to a star. The method of trigonometric parallaxes used to calculate the distance to nearby stars involves observing how the position of a nearby star seems to change as the Earth is in different positions in its orbit around the Sun. The line of sight to an observed star in December is different from the line of sight in June, when the Earth is on the other side of its orbit. The positions of the observed star, Earth and the Sun, make up the vertices of a triangle. Using trigonometry, the triangle is solved to determine the distance to the star. The angular shift, parallax, is one angle of a triangle, and the distance between the two vantage points, the baseline, is one side of the triangle. Since we have the length of the baseline, 2AU, and can measure the parallax of the star, we can calculate the distance to the star.
The majority of stars appear to maintain the same relative position for long periods. In fact, constellations identified by our ancestors are still seen today. So the observed star that we wish to know the distance to will not change its position significantly in the six months it is under observation. The closest star to our solar system is called Proxima Centauri, and it's about 4.25 light years or 40.2 trillion kilometers away. The Scottish astronomer Robert Innes, who at that time was the director of the Union Observatory in Johannesburg, South Africa, discovered it in 1915. Whilst interstellar travel at this stage may seem like science fiction, one thing is certain. If travelling to the stars were to someday become science fact, mathematics would be fundamental in achieving that reality.